and welcome to the Architecture and Design Weekly News Roundup. I'm Geraldine Chua. Sydney's been alive with design-related activity this week with the annual Vivid Festival once again transforming the urban landscape with light art sculptures, innovative installations and grand-scale projections on various iconic buildings. Good Design Australia timed their own annual festival to coincide with Vivid. The program includes a two-day international speakers forum and a massive gala awards night which happened this week on the 28th of May. Karoma took home the night's biggest prize, the Good Design Award of the Year, for its 22-piece Karoma Mark Neeson bathroom collection comprising toilets, tapware, showers, baths and a urinal. Neeson Merkit Architects and Sue Barnsley Design also won big in the architecture interiors category. The winning project, Prince Alfred Park and Pool, was praised by the judges for its holistic and considered approach to creating functional and inviting public spaces. Meanwhile, Australia's longest-running design and architecture industry trade show, DesignX, took over the Sydney Exhibition Centre on Glebe Island with three days of product exhibitions and events around trends, technology and the future of design. The HIA announced the 2014 Australian Housing Awards winners, with Western Australian builder Georgie Exclusive Homes taking out Home of the Year for Contemporary Styled Perth Home. The project was praised by the jury for its stunning mix of sophisticated elegance and architectural design. On the world stage, we reported that Sydney's One Central Park East by Atelier Jean Neveu and PTW and Architects was named fifth in the International and Porous Skyscraper Awards. Over 300 skyscrapers around the world were considered and ultimately the London Shard in the UK capital, designed by Renzo Piano, was named Best Skyscraper. This week, we also had a look at the draft master plan for Queensland's cultural precinct. The plan aims to guide development of Brisbane's South Bank over the next 20 years. Developed by Cox Rayner, Urbis and Lord Cultural Resources, the master plan will be realised through cultural institutions, dramatic buildings and diverse programming as well as the improvement and creation of new public spaces and better connections between existing cultural assets. Finally, there was some interesting speculation about the future of Melbourne skyline courtesy of Manesh Architecture Studio. The studio released a provocative series of visualisations that imagine Melbourne in 2051 if 662,000 dwellings are established in the Greenfield Growth Area as the current planned Melbourne strategy suggests and not in the city's middle suburbs. You can read more about each of these stories and join in the conversation on architectureanddesign.com.au. Thank you.